Good morning, Barracuda Bunch. We're so happy that you're all joining us this morning. Happy Tuesday. My name is Sarah. I work in the education department here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, and you have tuned in for another Crafty Critter. So we're gonna be doing some crafts today, and we're also gonna be learning about some really cool animals. This group of animals we're gonna talk about today are some of my favorite. And I know you probably hear us talk about our favorites all the time because we love so many ocean animals, but this group of animals really are my favorite. We are gonna focus on sharks today. Who likes sharks? Raise your hand. I'm raising my hand. I'm not alone in the studio. I've got Dana who's controlling what's behind me and she raised her hand. And Cynthia is going to take your questions and comments and she raised her hand. We all love sharks and I hope you love sharks too. And we're going to do a shark craft. Now, if you have any questions throughout this program about sharks or about anything that we are talking about, if you have any comments or observations you'd like to share, and then definitely at the end of the program, if you'd like to share your craft, you can send those into our text line. The number is right here. Oh, I got it really close. 562-286-1838 is that number. You're going to text those questions and observations and pictures too. Now keep in mind that data rates do apply. And if you're one of our younger viewers, make sure you have an adult permission before you text in. Now, if you're watching this program after it airs live, so it's not Tuesday, August 18th at 9 a.m., and you have questions or you want to share your pictures, please still send them in. We'd love to hear from you. But you're going to use an email address that's right below this phone number. It's going to be live at lbaop.org. So you're going to use that email if you're not watching live. Otherwise, you can test text us those pictures or questions or comments. And we actually already had a question come in from Angel. And don't worry, Angel, we got your question and we'll get to it a little bit later. All right, so for our craft, there's a couple materials you are gonna need. So I'm gonna grab those materials and show you what we're gonna be making today. This is what we're gonna be making, our nice little shark friend. So the materials for this project are, I'm gonna lay out what I'm gonna use, and then we have some alternatives you can use if these things aren't readily available to you. So one paper plate and then a couple pieces of construction paper. I'm going to use some white. I had this scrap piece of white paper, so I'm going to use that. A blue piece and a black piece of paper. Now, if you don't have these materials, if you don't have a plate that's available, you can just draw a big circle and cut that out. Or if you just have a piece of paper, you can draw all the things that we're going to be working on today because we're going to be focusing on shapes. So if you want to cut out those shapes, if you just want to draw them, however you want to do this craft, following along with us, you are welcome to. And then I'm also going to be using some scissors, a glue stick, and some tape. So any of those materials, we're going to give you a moment to go gather those supplies. And what I'm going to put up behind me while you're gathering your supplies is our Shark Lagoon webcam. So we have a lot of sharks here at the aquarium, and we also have a lot of cameras in our exhibits. And you can log on to our website or to the website explore.org and search and check out our exhibit. So I'm going to step off the screen and this is our shark lagoon. It looks really pretty. We've got our sharks swimming around and what I want you to do while you're gathering your materials or once you've gathered them is take a look at shark lagoon and make some observations. What do you see? Looking specifically at our sharks, do you notice anything about their body? Do you see any shapes? that you recognize on their body. Like I said, we're really gonna be focusing on shapes today as we're making our shark. <laughs> We've also got this ray tail right here. That's our reticulate whip tail ray. It was moving out of screen, but I just wanted to point out what that looked like a big branch or a stick in there, but that's actually the tail of our stingray. Now, of course, our sharks are no longer in view of camera. We have this funny rule here at the aquarium that the minute we start talking about an animal, they like to disappear from our view. But you can see in the back, right back here, following it. That's one of our zebra sharks. Oh, two of our zebra sharks. Here's our other one. Oh, there's another shark. So what shapes do you see? You can go ahead and whisper those shapes you see. You can shout them. You can tell them to your friend or your brother or sister if you're watching, or mom or dad, or grandma or grandpa, or if you're watching with your dog or cat, anyone, or you can text us. What shapes do you see on these animals? Or what things do you see on these sharks? that we need to make sure we remember to include when we build our shark. So if you have any ideas or observations, go ahead and send them in. We'll take another minute to watch our shark lagoon. You can also look at what else do you notice in shark lagoon? Do you see any colors? There's a lot of bright colors right here in front of us. What is this stuff here? Any ideas? So if you guessed that was coral, you're correct. So these sharks that we're looking at, they are tropical sharks. And that means that they live in warmer water. So these shark species we wouldn't necessarily find here along our coast in Southern California. Our water is a little bit too cold for these animals. 
So these sharks like that black tip reef shark that just swam right in front of us. And that zebra shark that's making a pass right now. Oh, and then there's our gray reef shark. We've got all of our sharks coming to say hi. Perfect timing. So these are all tropical sharks. So they live in warmer waters. Like that zebra shark, those two that bigger ones that swim by, they are native to Australia. And the water is really warm, so it's in the higher 70s, whereas the water here along our coast is going to be in the low 60s. All right. Hope you made some good observations. Are you ready to start building our shark? So let's see. I'm going to have Dana bring up a picture of any shark that we can look at to start thinking about what we need to include when we build our shark. There goes our gray reef. Ooh, <gasps> excellent. Does anyone know what this shark is? Whisper it. It's a great white shark. <gasps> I love great white sharks. These are massive sharks. They can get up to about 20 feet. I think the longest on record is around 22, 23 feet long, which is huge. I'm only five foot two, so that's like four of me. Now, on average, they get sort of in the 15, 20 foot range. But looking at this shark, what things do you notice? What do you notice? So we've got its head right here. What do you see? What's this right here? An eyeball. It's eyes. So the shark has eyes. What about here? That's its mouth. Excellent. What about over here? These things. They're fins. All right, so we've got a couple ideas. We need eyes. We need mouth. Probably some teeth. Sharks have lots of teeth and fins. So we're going to head over to, I have this document camera, so we can take a look at how we're going to start putting together our shark. All right, so I have this plate here. Let's see if make it a little bit darker. So this is going to be the whole body of our shark. And we're going to start off by making the mouth. Now think about what shape a mouth is. So on our sh sharks, it was sort of like a triangle or an indent. But we're going to make a half circle or a U. So I'm going to, let's see if I can draw it out first, make it easier for us to see. I'm going to make a half circle. Ooh, like that. So it's not a full circle, just that half circle. And then I'm going to cut it out. So I'm going to cut right along that line that I just traced. And this is going to be the mouth. He's going to be wide open. And you can really make the mouth any shape you want. I made it a half circle, so it's sort of like my shark has its mouth open wide. It's saying hello to everyone. You can make it smile, you can make it a big circle, like maybe it's about to take a big gulp of something. All right. Here is my shark's happy mouth. All right, so we're going to pause for a moment. That is going to be the mouth of my shark. Now, thinking about a shark's mouth, does it look empty like that? Do you think if a shark smiled, would it be this big open hole? What if you smile? What do you see? Teeth. So let's see, we're gonna bring up a picture of shark teeth. That's exactly the photo I was thinking about. So this is one of our sharks here at the aquarium. His name is Big Guy, because he's a big guy. He is a sand tiger shark. And besides being big, his body, look at his teeth. These are pretty big teeth. So his mouth is full of rows and rows of teeth. Now, take a look at those teeth. What shape do you see? You can make it with your hands. I'm going to make a triangle. You can draw it out. You can say it to someone next to you. We have triangles. So there's all these triangular shaped teeth in our shark's mouth. Now, what are those teeth used for? What do you think? Are they used just for smiling and looking pretty? I mean, that is definitely one reason that our shark has teeth, but those teeth are used for eating. Now, sand tiger sharks, their teeth are really long and skinny. Look how long this tooth is. And they're really skinny, and you can see they kind of curve inward. And there's a really important reason that they're like this. So, our sand tiger shark loves to eat things like larger fish, like mackerel, or that's what we feed him here, mackerel, sardines, anchovies, any fish that uh, the shark can find, that's what they're going to eat. Now, these teeth are really pointy, so they can grab a hold of that fish, but they're also curved inward so they can pull it into their mouth because fish can be really slippery. Fish have a layer of slime covering their body for protection. And if these teeth weren't pointy and kind of curved inward, that fish could easily escape. And so this way, our sand tiger shark is able to easily grab a hold of their food and swallow it so they can eat. 
All right, so let's go over to our document camera and let's start making some teeth. So remember, what shape were those teeth gonna be? Triangles, that's right. You know what, I skipped ahead one moment. Before we make our teeth, let's glue or tape down the mouth of our shark. That way it doesn't fly or get pushed aside. So I'm gonna add a little bit of glue and I'm gonna put it sort of at the bottom in the middle. So we've got the mouth of my shark. All right, now we're gonna cut some teeth. So remember, we're gonna cut triangles and you can cut as many or as few teeth as you'd like. I'm probably gonna do about five or six teeth. So I'm just gonna go along the edge of my white paper and cut some triangles. Really only make, need to make two cuts if you use that edge. One, two. So far I have how many teeth? One, two. All right, let's make a couple more teeth. And you can make them long, you can make them short, because shark teeth come in all different shapes and sizes. So we were just looking at our sand tiger shark's teeth, but not all shark's teeth look like that. There are some sharks, like that zebra shark we were looking at in Shark Lagoon, that have really teeny tiny teeth. And they're gonna be eating different things because those teeny tiny teeth are not going to be very good at catching their food. And then some sharks, like that great white shark that we looked at first, their teeth are an even bigger triangle than that sand tiger shark. And they actually have tiny, almost like little teeth, we call it serrated edges. So it's sort of bumpy down along the side of the triangle. And that is used to help them cut into their food. All right, they look like fangs on my shark. So I'm gonna place these teeth, oh, I made my teeth maybe a little too big for this mouth. <laughs> gonna cut some a little bit smaller. So you can always adjust, that's kind of the beauty and they can be all different shapes too because some sharks, it's kind of cool to think about, their teeth are one shape on the top and they're different looking on the bottom. I'm gonna make sure you can see that I am just kind of trimming the sides of these teeth just to make them a little bit skinnier so that I can fit a couple more teeth in there. Because sharks, they have a lot of teeth. Now, something interesting about sharks, if we can bring up in just a moment, I'm gonna get, tell Dana what I want, but hold off for a second, that we're gonna bring up the picture of Big Guy once more in just a second. All right, here's my shark teeth, excellent. All right, let's go back to Big Guy for just a second. All right, so take a look at these teeth. Now, if we were to look in our mouth, we have our teeth, right? Do we have rows and rows and rows of teeth? No, we just have our teeth. If you're little, you might have your baby teeth, and then when those fall out, you get your adult teeth. But take a look at this mouth. I can count, let's see, one, two, three rows of teeth that are exposed. So sharks, their teeth, they fall out pretty easily. Not like ours, because their jaw, this thing that holds your teeth in, for us, it's made of bone. For sharks, it's made of something that's a lot softer. It's made of cartilage. That's what we have in our nose. If you kind of wiggle your nose a little bit, it's a little bit softer. Or wiggle your ears, it's a little bit softer. And so their teeth, they're not fused. They're not kind of stuck in their jaw the way they are for us. So every couple of bites of food that our shark takes, their teeth are gonna fall out. Now, if they only had one or two sets of teeth like us, they would run out of teeth really quickly. And then it'd be like an old grandpa shark with no teeth. Would they be able to eat anything? Probably not very easily. So sharks, they have rows and rows and rows of teeth and they actually keep growing more. It's almost like a conveyor belt. So once this front row falls out, there's another one that sticks right up and is ready to go. And when that one falls out, there's another one that comes right up and is ready to go. And sharks can have 30,000 teeth in their lifetime. You heard that right, 30,000 teeth. That's such a huge number of teeth, but that's because they fall out pretty easily and that way sharks always have teeth to use in order for them to eat. Now we have a couple questions that came in and then we'll get back to building our shark. So like I mentioned, Angel sent in a question earlier today and he said, can a squid get as big as a shark? Interesting, can a squid get as big as a shark? So that's an interesting question because there are a lot of types of sharks and there are a lot of types of squid. Now the largest shark, we have to mention it because I'm teaching this program and I love sharks and my favorite animal in the whole entire world is a whale shark, which is the largest shark. Thank you, Dana. Look at this beauty. Aren't they cool? So these sharks are the largest sharks in the world, in the ocean, the largest fish. And on average, they get about 40 feet. I think record there have been a couple sightings of ones that get as big as 60, but on average, they're about 30 to 40 feet long. And squid, there are some really big squid, like the giant squid, which also gets about 40 to 50 feet long. So think about that. There are squids that are as long 
as sharks are. Now, their body, sort of the width of their body is going to be different. The giant squid is a pretty streamlined and thin animal. So if we were to lay it on top of that whale shark, it wouldn't be as wide, but it might be just as long or even longer. So that's a great question, Angel, because the biggest sharks and biggest squid are about the same size, but also there are some smaller ones too. There's something called a Humboldt or a uh, jumbo squid, and they get about 10 to 12 feet, like this one here. And that's, oh, this one's only probably about six or seven feet. So that's about the size of a human. And guess what? There are also sharks that are about six or seven feet long. Like those gray tip, or the black tip reef sharks are about six feet. Uh, we get leopard sharks here. They can get about six feet. So there are different sizes of squid and different sizes of sharks. And some of them can be similar size. Excellent question, Angel. All right. And then Eddie wants to know, do sharks eat other sharks? Ooh, interesting question. What do you think? Possibly. A lot of sharks are what we call opportunistic feeders, which means if they find food and it's something that they can get and they can eat, they're going to eat it. So it's quite possible that sharks might feed on other sharks. Now, it's not going to be their main source of food. They, a lot of sharks have sort of the main things that they're going to try and eat, but they will eat other things if they can find it. Great questions. Keep them coming. And we're going to head back over to our document camera, glue down those teeth, and then move on to the next part of our shark. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on my shark's teeth. It almost looks like we're making something for Halloween with all these fangs, but we're gonna add a couple more things that are gonna change this into a shark. All right, I've got, how many teeth did I glue down already? We've got one, two, three, and I have two more. So we're gonna go for tooth number four. And the last one is gonna make it tooth number five. All right, so we've got all of my shark's teeth, but we're missing quite a few things. So sharks, they have teeth that they use to eat, but how do they find their food? There could be a couple different ways. They might smell for their food or they might look for their food. So we need to make some eyes. Now the eyes can be done in a couple different ways. If you wanna use a marker, so I have a Sharpie right here, or a crayon or a colored pencil, you can draw the eyes. Now think about, the teeth are triangles, our mouth is a half circle, what shape do you think the eyes are going to be? Maybe for a moment we can bring up uh, that great white or even the sand tiger, any kind of shark where we can see their eyes and figure out what shape, perfect, this is a perfect what shape, a perfect circle, look at this right here, perfect circle for the eye of the shark. So what I'm going to do is I am actually going to cut out, I'm going to use both black and white. I'm going to cut out the eyes, but if you want to just draw them on, that is perfectly fine because that works just the same way. And you can actually choose what color eye you want to make. So I'm going to make it a big white circle. I'm going to cut this piece right here and then I'm going to fold it in half so I can cut two at the same time. So we're going to go over to our document camera. All right. So I'm going to I fold it, I have this long piece of white paper and I folded it in half. And that way when I cut, I'm gonna get the two eyes and they're gonna be the exact same shape. So I'm gonna cut out this one eye. This is gonna be sort of the back of the eye. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with a piece of black paper. All right, so there's the start of the eyeballs. And now I'm gonna grab my black paper and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut sort of a little strip out of it. And then I'm gonna fold it over in half. And then I'm gonna cut a smaller circle out of this black piece of construction paper. Gotta make sure it's a little bit smaller than the white circle I cut out. I think I made them too big. Yep, so I'm gonna just trim it a little bit. There we go. And I'm gonna place it right over. Ta-da! All right, now we gotta get some gluing down. So first, I'm going to glue the black circle onto the white circle. And you can place it anywhere in that white circle. And then I'm going to glue the second eye. So we've got one, two eyes. I'm going to glue it onto my second white circle. And then I have to attach the eyes to the head of the shark. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the white circle. And there's one eye. And then a little bit more glue on the second. 
Ta-da! Now my shark can see. How are your sharks coming along? Hope they're doing well. All right, so we have the teeth. And what shape are these teeth again? Triangles. So the teeth are triangles. The mouth, oh, other way. The mouth is a half circle. And then the eyes, woo, here we go. The eyes are both circles. And we have two eyes. All right. But does that look just like a shark yet? Are we missing something? We are definitely missing some parts. So let's maybe go back to shark. Oh, here we go. Well, we can take a look at this shark. This is a black tip reef shark. What do you notice on its body? Let's take a look at Shark Lagoon and see if we can make some observations. What part of our shark are we missing? So we've got the eyes, we've got the mouth, and we've got its head. But what are we missing that's really going to make it look like a shark? How are these sharks moving? What's helping them move? If you said the fins, you've got it. So shark needs their fins to swim. Now, sharks have a lot of different fins, and they all serve a very specific purpose. So now let's go back to that picture Dana had brought up before of that black tip reef shark. And let's take a look at these fins. All right, so first things first, what shape? We've got a lot of the same shape on our shark. If, what shape do you see right here? A triangle. So sharks have a lot of triangles. Their fins are triangles, their teeth are triangles. So we are gonna be focusing on that triangle shape when we make our fins. But the fins serve a purpose and they're all used for swimming, but they're all used in a little bit of a different way. So these fins on the side right here, they are important. These are called their side or pectoral fins. So you can stick your arms out. Those are gonna be your pectoral fins. And then if we look up here, this one on top is the top or dorsal fin. So go ahead and make your dorsal fin. And then it's kind of hard to see in this picture because we kind of cut it off, but back here is the tail or caudal fin. Now let's go back to Shark Lagoon really quick and we'll talk about how these fins are used. Because like I said, they're all used for swimming. Oh, perfect, right here. Take a look. Now, what fin are they moving the most? If you said the tail, you're right. So they use their caudal tail to swim. So if you clap your hands together, sharks and fish are gonna use their tail like this. Now thinking of things like whales and dolphins, their tail is flat and goes up and down. And that's one way you can tell the difference if you're looking at a shark or if you're looking at a mammal like a whale is how they move their tail. So sharks tails go side to side. Now, when you see the sharks swimming again, when they come by, notice, are they moving their pectoral fins or are they pretty stable? Are they moving at all? So here comes this shark right here. Watch its pectoral fins. Are they moving? Not really. So we think about a fish, like a tropical fish you see kind of in the background here. They use their fins when they're swimming, but our sharks, they use their pectoral fins. Our sharks, their pectoral fins are used more for steering and kind of to keep them balanced a little bit. So their tail fin's really the one that's gonna be moving the most, whereas their pectoral fins stay pretty straight. And then that top fin, that dorsal fin is really important. We don't see it moving very much either, but that is to keep the shark from spinning in a circle. So if we don't have that top fin, our shark's body is gonna move in a spiral motion and that gets really dizzying for the shark and it's not very helpful if they wanna be swimming. So that top fin, that dorsal fin, is also used to help balance the shark. All right, let's head over to our document camera and start making some shark fins. Now I'm gonna be using blue because that's the kind of color paper we found, but your fins can be any color you'd like. They can be white, they can be black, they can be green, they can be purple, pink, any color that you wanna choose. That's what your fins can be. Now we are gonna make three fins. We're gonna make the two pectoral fins, the two side fins, and then one dorsal fin. But remember, what shape are we gonna make? We've got it right here in our teeth. We're gonna make them triangles. All right, so I'm going to start with the dors or the pectoral, the side fins. So I'm going to make them kind of long. I'm going to cut out two bigger triangles. There we go. There's one. And then I'm going to cut out a second triangle. I'm going to make them kind of long. So triangles can be all different sizes. The sides can be longer than the base, the base right here. They can be equal. You can make them all different sizes. However shape of the, or whatever size of that triangle you want to make, that's what you can make your fins. All right, so I have my two fins. Now, I'm going to use tape to attach them because that'll stick a little bit easier. The glue won't have as much time to dry, but you can glue it. You can tape it. You can even staple it if you have a stapler. And what I'm going to do to attach it is I'm going to turn the plate over and I'm going to attach it 
to the back. So I'm gonna decide where I want them. I'm gonna put them sort of lower, sort of in line with the middle of the mouth, and I'm gonna hold my finger right here when I turn it over so I know exactly where to tape the fin. So there's fin number one. All right, now I'm gonna find the placement for fin number two. I'm gonna do it right here. Gotta get my second piece of tape. All right, fin number two is gonna be right here. Excellent. So there are my shark's pectoral fins. So those are gonna be the fins that my shark is gonna to use to kinda of keep balance and to steer as they move through the water. All right, now, we need to make that dorsal fin. So that dorsal fin is the one on the top. Now the dorsal fin is really important. As I mentioned, it helps for balance. So I'm gonna make it a little bit wider than I made those pectoral fins. And there's something else interesting about that dorsal fin that we'll talk about just after we attach it. You know what, I made that one too small. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. It's good, we've got this big piece of paper. Now I want my shark to have a really big dorsal fin because I want my shark to be able to swim really fast. All right, I'm gonna grab another piece of tape. I'm going to tape the, it to the back, just like that, ta-da! All right, so we have completed, I've completed my shark. Now, I use this white plate, you may have used some paper. You can also decorate the rest of your shark. You can decorate the fins, you can decorate the head. You can use markers or colored pencils or crayons, anything you have. If you'd like to add, you can add stickers to it to make your shark unique and all your own. Now, something about that dorsal fin I was mentioning. If we go back to Shark Lagoon and we'll take a look at our sharks as they pass by and we'll take a look at their dorsal fins. So we've got our black tip reef shark coming around and then way in the back, she's gonna hide her zebra shark, but take a look at the fins of our black tip reef shark that dorsal fin. It's sort of what you think about when you think of that top fin of a shark. It's really pointy, it's really big, and it's that perfect triangle. But not all sharks have that shaped dorsal fin. Our gray tip reef sharks have a similar. But if our zebra shark comes by, you'll notice it's not as pointy, it's not as tall, and it's kind of rounded. So that dorsal fin I mentioned is used for balance, but it also lets us know something about the shark. It tells us about their speed. So the larger the dorsal fin, the bigger it is in compared to the body size, the faster moving that animal's gonna go. So our black tip reef sharks with that big dorsal fin and our gray reef sharks with that big triangular dorsal fin, that's gonna tell us that this shark, if they need to, oh, here it comes, perfect timing. If they want to, if they need to, they can pick up speed and swim a lot faster than a shark like that zebra shark. Maybe we can bring up a picture of a zebra shark. All right, so take a look. Does this dorsal fin right here, does this one look the same as it did on those gray tip or those gray and those black tip reef sharks? No, it looks really different. It's still a triangle, but it's definitely not all equal. It's not as tall and it's not as pointy. And so that tells us that the zebra shark may be a little bit slower moving than that, uh, those other sharks. And so their fins not only help them swim, but it also tells us scientists who are making observations a little bit more about that animal. And so our zebra shark here is gonna be a little bit slower. Now I do keep calling this one a zebra shark, but you might be looking at the TV, looking at me funny thinking, that doesn't look like a zebra, does it? I would agree with you. It does not look like a zebra. So as I mentioned, this shark is native to Australia. And if you travel to Australia and you see a shark like this, they're gonna say, that's a leopard shark, which sounds like a more appropriate name, don't you think? Because look at all these spots, kind of like a leopard. But if you're here in California, and if you go swimming in the ocean or you come visit us at the aquarium, you will find that we have a leopard shark here. And it looks very different from this shark. I don't know, Dana, do we have a picture of a leopard shark we can bring up? We might, so I'm gonna give Dana a minute. But our leopard shark is a lot smaller. Their body shape is different. And even the pattern is a little bit different. But here we call them a leopard shark. So if we, at the aquarium here, we're trying to feed our leopard sharks and we call this one and this one a leopard shark, that would get really confusing, wouldn't it? You'd say to Aquarius, did you feed the leopard sharks? And they'd be like, um, the big ones, the little ones, the ones warm water, the ones cold. It's very confusing. And so we give them a different name. So we call those other sharks zebra sharks because as babies, they actually look like a zebra. They have black and white stripes that are vertical. I don't know that we have a picture of one. Dana's gonna take a look, but they have those black and white stripes. And then as they grow older, 
they get bigger and those stripes break up and they become the spots that you saw on that leopard shark. So let's go back to Shark Lagoon. Here we go. So we're going to take one last look at Shark Lagoon and see if our shark, how our shark holds up with other sharks. What do you guys think? Looks good? You know what? You can also name it. I'm really into naming our animals. So what should I name this shark? Cynthia is always good with names. Bailey. Bailey? Billy. 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 This is Billy the shark. So Billy the shark, thanks everyone so much for joining us today. And remember, text us in the pictures of the sharks you made or email us. We'd love to see your creations. Uh, join us tomorrow to learn about ABCs in the ocean. Lots of cool animals to go over as we learn our alphabet. Uh, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday.